I think what happens to people who've been here a long time, you, you suddenly realise that you've actually become the, the strange people that you met in the past who were there when you arrived. And I assume and hope that this will actually continue. <laughs> What you get in the museum is proximity to the objects, and I think nothing at all can match that. But to actually stand beside a stone statue, to walk around a stone statue, to almost feel the reflection of light off it and heat off it is a, a, a great study, I believe. Victor Harris has lived in Japan, is a fluent Japanese speaker, is married to a Japanese woman, and he teaches kendo. His assistant, Paul, studies with him both in class and at the museum. Both are passionate about samurai swords. In Japan, traditionally, kendo, or swordsmanship, has been a spiritual study, as indeed has been the subject of the Japanese sword. This is an example of the um, fully developed, curved Japanese sword. It was made by the master smith Yoshikane of Bizen province, present-day Okayama prefecture, around the end of the 12th century. It's made by a very sophisticated technology of repeatedly folding the steel over and over and over and over again. Um, when the blade is finally formed into its sword-like shape, it is coated overall with a layer of clay. Uh, that is partially removed along what is to be the cutting edge. The whole is then heated to the colour of the moon in February or August and plunged into a bath of water. When the blade is polished, its intrinsic beauty is visible in the very many varied shades, hues and textures of the crystalline structures along its edge. The beauty in this sword was not contrived by the smith. It was a kind of a joint effort, if you like, between the smith and the gods of the forge, or the smith and nature. Now, if you look at the, the pot with a, a natural ash glaze, we'll see something similar. We'll see this um, very high temperature kiln technology, which was introduced to Japan around the 5th century, about the same time as steel technology came from China. We will see a similarly uncontrived natural beauty on the object. So this shigaraki ware pot, this sort, and perhaps rather more ethereal, um, a Japanese calligraphy by an enlightened artist are perhaps the three objects which are at the heart and soul of the Japanese culture.